and gave to her the modern message of divine mercy. Again, not a new gospel, but a message that brings us back to the heart of the gospel, which is what? Mercy. mercy. And one of the things I didn't mention about mercy is John Paul II defines mercy as love when it means poverty, weakness, brokenness, suffering, sin. That mercy is love when it means suffering. So on the eve of the worst war in human history, in the place that would suffer the worst, Jesus gave this message of divine mercy through Faustina, this message of hope, this message of God's presence, this message of God's love in the midst of suffering. If you see in the image of divine mercy, you notice how there's a black background? That's because Jesus is stepping into the darkness of the modern world and bringing hope and bringing mercy. So for the Polish people during the war, that message of divine mercy brought them so much comfort. In fact, a lot of the Polish soldiers would sew <clears throat> images of divine mercy into their uniforms. People would put the image of divine mercy up in their homes. It brought people so much comfort. And then after the war, the message of divine mercy began to spread throughout Europe because as people were rebuilding and mourning their dead, the message of divine mercy brought them so much consolation. It was a reminder to them that God had not abandoned them, that he was stepping into their darkness and that he was present to them. And so the message of divine mercy spread like wildfire. The only problem is that the sisters in St. Faustina's convent, when they took her handwritten diary, they typed it out and they made a lot of mistakes. And so when people were making prayer cards and translations, there was a lot of errors. And so bishops and priests and theologians were getting these materials that had these errors, and they were sending them to the Vatican, to the Holy Office in Rome, which is the present-day congregation for the doctrine of the faith, which is the doctrinal watchdogs for the church. And the people in the Vatican and the Holy Office they were getting these materials with these errors and they were saying, no, this is all wrong. And they drafted a document that would have forever forbidden the divine mercy message and devotion that comes to us through St. Faustina. And they drafted the document and all they needed was the signature of the Pope. The Pope at the time, though, was very sick. He was Pius XII. He was so sick, in fact, that he died from his illness. And because he was sick for so long, there was a huge pile of papers on his desk. And the, the, the Vatican bureaucrats in the Holy Office, they took this document that needed the Pope's signature that would have forever forbidden the divine mercy message and devotion, and they slipped it at the bottom of the pile of the papers of the Pope's, on the Pope's desk, hoping that the next Pope would just rubber stamp it when he got to the bottom. Well, the next Pope who was elected was St. John the 23rd. And St. John the 23rd, who had worked in the Vatican and he knew how the bureaucracy worked, his secretary tells us that when he walked into his office and he saw this big pile of papers on his desk, he sat down, made the sign of the cross. It's 11 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock. He, <laughs> he took that pile of papers and he flipped it over so that the first thing he dealt with as Pope was this decree that would have forever forbidden the divine mercy message of devotion. His secretary says that the Pope shook his head and said, no, 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 the Polish bishops need to be consulted, but they couldn't be consulted because of the Iron Curtain. And so instead of a permanent ban on the divine mercy and message of devotion, John the 23rd signed a temporary ban until more information could be gathered. So divine mercy dodged the bullet. The only problem was the people in Poland, when they got news of the ban, they were mad. Temporary ban or not, this was the message that had brought them so much comfort during the war. And so they were upset. But you know what? They shouldn't have been so upset. Because if they would have read the diary of Sister Faustina, the diary of Faustina predicted that something like this would happen. Jesus told Faustina, there will come a time when this work of mercy will seem to be completely undone then I will act with power and it will become a new light for the church. But then there was something else in the diary of Faustina that alluded to something even greater. Jesus said to Faustina, 
I bear a special love for Poland. That's why he used it so much. I think he would say the same thing about the Philippines. I bear a special love for Poland. And if she will be obedient to my will, I will exalt her in light and holiness. From her will come forth the spark that will prepare the world for my final coming. That spark needs to be lighted by the grace of God. So anyway, so this, the, the, the spark that will prepare the world for the Lord's final coming will come from Poland, is what the Diary of Faustina says. Let's not look at that right now. Let's go back to the narrative. So at this point, 